Here are 10 things you should do as a Web3 builder if you want to completely destroy your NFT project. Now, the reason why I'm making this video and I'm taking this angle is because we as humans tend to resonate and understand consequences a lot more than we understand rewards and benefits. So if I tell you, for example, here are 10 ways to get fat, you understand that this holds a lot more weight, literally, than if I am to tell you, here's five things you could do to lose weight. So teaching something through consequence is a lot more powerful than teaching it through reward. So with that said, what are the 10 things we should do for our project to completely destroy it? But before that, if this is the first time we meet, my name is Leon Abood and I'm building the Vayner Media of Web3 through my consulting and marketing growth agency, unfungible.xyz. My goal making these videos is to help you build a killer Web3 brand so you can go out there, scale that to the masses and eventually come to us and partner with us to take it to the next level. So let's get into point number one. Remember, the goal is to create a product that is as repelling to our buyers as physically possible. So number one, bot all your followers. The more you can bot your audience, the better. Open your X account, open your Discord, and only buy followers. Followers are followers, it doesn't matter if they are real or not. Number two thing you need to do to destroy your NFT project is to create a derivative project. So what is a derivative project you ask? A derivative project is a project whose art is completely inspired from a already established and famous collection. For example, Board Ape Yacht Club, you recreate the exact same traits, maybe you change the background or maybe you change the face of the ape. So it looks the exact same thing, it's just a derivative. And derivative projects used to be very famous, very popular during the bull market. A lot of people used to FOMO into them and they are notorious for not having a roadmap and not having a team. They most likely are going to be a rug. So if your goal is to destroy your project, 100% go for a derivative. The space needs another derivative project right now. Number three, your project name should be made up of four words. The first word being bored, the last one being club. So just like derivatives, this is inspired by the Board Ape Yacht Club. So what you can do is you can have Board Giraffe Golf Club, for example. That's a great, beautiful project name, 100% go for this one. What it communicates is a lack of creativity and also it's very close to a derivative. So amazing, let's go for that branding. Number four thing to destroy your project is to not launch a Discord server. And that's a conversation I very often have with a lot of founders actually. Discord is the best place for your community to build a strong bond between one another. On Twitter, it is very hard for people to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. The conversations tend to be one to many. On Discord, all of a sudden, you have the capacity to communicating to deeper levels with people, which helps solidify community spirit. And obviously, if our objective is to completely destroy and remove any chances of our project succeeding, forget about Discord. We're only gonna keep our audience on Twitter fractionalized and isolated from one another. Number five, be impatient and launch a 30 day marketing window. Through the research we conduct at Unfungible, we track all the projects that are notable and are marketing in the Web3 space right now as we speak. Statistically, we've noticed that a 30 day marketing window is the best one for projects to fail. So if your goal is to fail, only make your marketing 30 days because 30 days is perfect because it's enough to spend considerable amounts of marketing and not enough for you to get any traction and to build any depth and to position yourself within Web3 culture. So if you want to destroy your project, only market it for 30 days. Point number six, bulk schedule all your tweets 100 days in advance. In an ideal world, what a project would do is find a way to embed themselves within Web3 culture. So as conversation is happening, as things are rolling out, your goal as a successful project is to come in and position yourself within that conversation, adding subtleties to a take, adding your expertise to a certain subject. But now, if your objective is to completely disregard this and destroy your project, there's no need to become part of Web3 conversation. All you need to do is schedule all your tweets 100 days in advance and completely disregard and be blind to all the conversation that is happening as we speak in the Web3 space. And here's a bonus point for you. If you can make it sound like your tweets were generated by ChatGPT, that's an extra point that you get. Seventh way to destroying your NFT project is to make a lot of giveaways. The more giveaways you can make, the better. Giveaways communicate the sense that you have a cheap project that is only appealing for people that are 
degens or are there for the giveaway. They're not really there for the project. They're only there for whatever price you're giving. Most of the time, it's a fake money prize that you're giving or it's random whitelist to a project. If you can communicate this sense of cheapness to your audience, this is 100% going to guarantee that the project completely fails. Number eight, never dox. Doxing often helps build trust and credibility within your audience. It helps people pay attention to you. It helps you use also your background of information, of knowledge, of history, and of credibility to come in into the space and say like, here's what I did and here's what I can do in the context of this Web3 project. Now, obviously we don't want to build that type of trust with our audience, so don't dox. The more mysterious you can be, the more you can make people feel like you're just here to launch a project and then you're slowly gonna disappear the better. Point number nine to destroying your project. And this is an OP move. I've only seen the masters in the game pull this one off. The best thing you can do to mess your project up is to two days before that, you announce to the community that you've changed the mint price to $50 and the supply to 5,000 NFTs. What this does is that it communicates a sense of uncertainty and insecurity from the part of the team, which is exactly what you want to do if you want to destroy your project. Number 10, stick to a 2021 roadmap. So if you are to go to some of the older projects that launched in 2021, you're gonna notice a certain pattern in the roadmaps that they have. What they promise is merch, they promise access to future giveaways, they promise whitelist to other collections. These are all characteristics of an old outdated 2021 roadmap. So if you wanna communicate that your project is still stuck in the ways of 2021, and that you don't really have a roadmap whatsoever, go for a 2021 roadmap. And here's a bonus one for you, ladies and gentlemen, that unfortunately, with good intent, I see a lot of founders kind of fall into that category. And a lot of times, I have to find myself pointing it out to them because they do it unknowingly and out of good intentions, which is spend the next couple months, invest thousands of dollars without really understanding where the market and the space is evolving. Spend your time building a product only to realize after you've finished building it, that no one wants the product. Even if they did in the past, it is now irrelevant and it is now outdated. This is one I see very often. So the inverse of this rule right now is not to spend your time stuck building the product, but it is instead to position yourself and your brand as a leader in a certain industry. One way to do that is with products. Another way to do that is through media. But a lot of time I see founders disconnected from the reality and they end up being too stuck building in silence and completely disconnected from the market. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen, 10 things you should do to completely destroying your project. I hope through this lens, you now understand what are the things that often cause projects to fail. And if you really have the best intentions for your team and for the space, then do the inverse of all the things I've mentioned in today's video. Thank you for watching and I will see you ladies and gentlemen in the very next video. Ciao.